So, hello everyone. My name is Michael Ray. I am science writer at SENS Research Foundation, and I'm joined this morning by Dr. Amit Sharma. He is the group lead for our Apopto SENS group here at the Research Center, working on novel ways to target senescent cells in our tissues. Dr. Sharma, good morning. Good morning. So, what's the big problem you're trying to solve? Michael, um, as we age, we tend to accumulate a lot of damage, um, and uh, normally we have the ability to correct that damage, um, but if, if, uh, if that ability declines over time, damage tends to accumulate. One damage that we are focused on is the uh, uh, accumulation of death-resistant cells or senescent cells, and we are trying to use the immune system to, to find and remove these senescent cells. So we have a very effective immune system which over millions of years have found ways to identify and uh, and kill senescent cells. Um, that ability uh, if is is good but you know it declines over time and and, um, and that's why senescent cells accumulate and that's why we are trying to find ways to, to, to remove them. Right. Um, now people who follow this work will be familiar with senolytic drugs which are a class of drugs that selectively destroys senescent cells and leaves normal cells behind, at least that's the principle. So why doesn't that solve that problem? Why do you need to come in with this novel approach? Uh, senescent cells are, um, are very, very good drugs. They're effective, uh, but there are limitations. Uh, these drugs, for instance, cannot, um, they can be toxic. For instance, they are repurposed cancer, cell, uh, cancer drugs, chemotherapy drugs. Um, and also, we know that senescent cells are different. There is heterogeneity in them in terms of the, the type of induction and uh, the type of cell. So some drugs are more selective or, uh, or effective in, say, uh, cancer, uh, senescent cells that are in liver or, or blood vessels or skin. Uh, so their selective would be different. And because of that, um, they may not be as effective in actual patients. Immune system, on the other hand, has the ability to distinguish and identify all types of senescent cells and kill them very effectively. Right. And there's a particularly interesting example of that, where you can show that um, cells have to undergo senescence in order to successfully resolve an injury. So uh, if you have a skin injury or if you have damage to your liver, uh, the cells will start producing proteins to repair that. But if they are allowed to go on indefinitely that way, they, the tissue can become fibrotic, and so they have to undergo senescence. And if you use a senolytic drug to destroy those cells along the way, you don't wind up properly resolving the injury. So um, is there reason to think that an immune-based approach could avoid that problem? Well, I think so. I mean, we, we understand that, like you mentioned, all sen senescent cells are good. They, they do a function in our body, and that's why they've been they, they are around, and wound repair, uh, regeneration is part of it, uh, but they are different. So most senescent cells that are responsible for wound healing, for instance, are uh, P21, one of the markers uh, of senescence. They are positive for that, and and uh, we don't know if these senescent senolytic drugs would be able to discriminate between those. So they actually may have that adverse effect. I mean, synolytics, that is, uh, where they would remove these cells that are actually good for us and could delay wound healing, and that's been shown, actually, the models that it happens. If uh, Immune system, on the other hand, can take care of all of those problems without interfering with the wound healing process, per se. Right. Um, and there's actually an additional specific case that's been found here inside Re yes. SENS Research Foundation by Dr. Adamatsu, who mm -hmm. is working in parallel with you. Tell us about what he's found and why that's important for what we're working on. I'm glad you asked this, Michael. Um, uh, Teswahun is a fantastic researcher who's been working with us and he was particularly interested in a, a phenomenon that we know about senescence that in addition to dysfunction um, and inability to, to, to propagate, senescent cells also produce uh, a mix of proteins and cytokines and chemokines that can be very detrimental. Um, so these are factors that promote inflammation, these right. are factors that damage the local uh, matrix Tissue that supports the cells. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. very harmful. It's one of the reasons why senescent cells are bad for us right. if they persist. Right. Uh, so uh, te and another, th another um, uh, insidious thing this, these proteins do is that they, they cause a domino effect by propagating senescence in neighboring cells and making them senescent. 
So Tess was interested in understanding the difference between these uh, primary senescent cells and paracrine senescent cells, and he found that several of these paracrine senescent cells were resistant to a lot of senolytics that are being tested in various models. Um, and um, and in, in that process, he also found other vulnerabilities that can be used to target them, not only paracrine, but also primary senescent cells. And uh, we are very excited about those research and we are in the process of uh, publishing that. And soon we will, we will have alternate ways to kill senescent cells much safely. So this is really important, right? So right. historically, uh, scientists have tested these cellular drugs initially by just taking a single cell exposing it to radiation or chemicals or whatever that converts that one cell into senescent cell and then you find a drug that targets it. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were completely blind to this whole other phenomenon, this whole other class of senescent cells. Yeah. And Dr. Edmatsu has discovered an alternative pathway that is active in both that you can target that selectively destroys both kinds of senescent cells, right. the primary and the secondary, while still leaving non-senescent cells behind. Yeah, and to in addition to uh, you know what you said, we've also found that the immune system, on the other hand, uh, kills both of these cell types right. with equal efficacy. Right. So again, bring us back to there's a strong advantage to using the immune, immune system. system. We have billions of years of evolution that has already honed it to the system. We just have to rejuvenate that ability. That is correct. So that's actually a taller order than I just made it sound. Tell us about what you're doing to fortify or rejuvenate the immune system. So, um, like you said, you know, the immune system is very capable of recognizing and killing senescent cells and uh, is very, very selective. However, um, it, this ability also declines with age. So we are trying to um, improve the ability of the aging immune system, in particular natural killer cells, which are one of the most important immune modulators of senescent cells. We're trying to improve their function. We're also trying to arm them with, uh, with, with the ability to recognize senescent cells based on unique antigens that we've identified in the labs, uh, in our lab, um, where the idea would be that these natural killer cells will recognize, so they will be rejuvenated you know, from older persons so they can function better. And if that is not enough, then we will arm them with um, ability to recognize and mount an immune response against senescent cells more effectively. Right. So we're doing, and, and this approach, a similar approach like that has been developed for cancer treatment, uh, where they have used CAR-T, um, uh, this is chimeric antigen receptor, where unique surface receptors are expressed on T cells to, to recognize cancer cells and kill them. Um, we think natural killer cells could also be armed the same way, but uh, to recognize senescent cells. Um, and, and I think there are several advantages of, of, of CAR, uh, CAR NK cells over CAR T cells. Right, right. And we have already have some experience with CAR NK cells in the cancer context, right. which already tells us that they have some advantages just right out of the gate over mm -hmm. CAR T. Right. Tell us about those advantages. Uh, to, to, to begin with, uh, in addition to being uh, selective to, towards senescent cells, these are essentially rejuvenated NK cells as well. So their natural ability to recognize the target still uh, is functional. So we are just adding another arm to this ability. Then um, they, they are going to be less toxic or less non-specific toxicity because they are short-lived, relatively short-lived. So they will do whatever they need to do, which is remove senescent cells, and they will eventually die on their own. Um, they will also be more, uh, they will be cheaper to produce because effectively we can um, transplant multiple individuals with an off-the-shelf NK cell that has been modified with CAR technology. Right, so this uh, is one of the disadvantages of CAR T, where right. you have to, if I'm treating you as a cancer patient, I have to take out your T cells yeah. I have to engineer your T cells, I have to scale that up to a very large number of T cells and then reinfuse them into you. And that's a time consuming and, and, and very expensive. Right. And process. it's only usable for me. Right. Which is making it way more expensive than it should be. Yeah. And then uh, they are very long lived. So you will literally have to uh, induce a suicide gene or some way to kill them or get rid of uh, right. these because they can live Or they can long. just go bananas yeah. and yeah. attack every tissue yeah. in your body. Yeah. And CAR and K cells are different in as much as, first off, you can do them off the shelf, as you yes. were saying. Yeah. So you could have one cell line that could be used for anybody. Right. And secondly, in as much as because they're shorter lived, there's less risk that they're just gonna run wild out of control. Right. 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 And, and they are also, um, they don't, they're not susceptible to immune checkpoints. So like cancer cells have, for instance, figured out how 
to 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 deactivate CAR T. They cannot. So those pathways are not available in NK cells. So they're resistant to those uh, those deactivating pathways. So they'll escape that. And then uh, they are relatively much safer because they. Uh, there is there are reports of CAR T causing neurotoxicity and uh, cytokine storm and none of those problems are are uh, are being reported with CAR NK so they're much more safer that way. Okay. So what we are doing in the lab is we have recently identified several unique uh, surface markers that we think are unique to senescent cells and we are uh, designing um, CARs to make CAR and case toward, towards those so we can target senescent cells. Right, so having identified the target on the senescent cell, you can now engineer a receptor on the NK cells that will specifically go after that right. in addition to the natural ability right. that the NK cells already have. Right. So that is an excellent combination. Um, so what is next? What are your near-term challenges? So the biggest problem uh, or the limitation that we're trying to solve now uh, is lack of good effective model to test us in, in, in vivo. Uh, with Meaning in actual living animals, actual not little, just Right, testing. right, in an, uh, an animal model. So there are no real good animal models to test. The reason is that human and mouse immune system is quite different. Um, the NK cells are quite different. And we don't share the antigens with mouse. So one way to solve that problem that we're working towards and there are there are examples that we, we've been using uh, or we can use to to this end is uh, we can re-engineer the human immune system in mice from the get-go so there are mouse models available which which are born without an effective immune system so we can completely repopulate the immune system with the human immune cells and then we can test our uh, car nk cells in that model Alternatively, there has been great promise of um, these organ-on-chip models where human organs can be grown in microscopic state in, 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 in chip and, and essentially like a whole human could be grown like that in a chip. Um, this is obviously a model system and then we can test our car in case in those two models. I mean, this would be more humane, more, more ethical in terms of animal welfare. So we're looking at those two models, but so far, you know, it's it's going to be, it's it's a road unseen, you know, a, a new path that we're trying to carve for ourselves. So just to spell out that first part, the issue there is that the immune system of mice and human are different in such a way that it's at least conceivable that you could have a therapy that works gangbusters in right. mice, yeah. but because it has peculiarities about the mouse immune system, mm -hmm. uh, it might be completely irrelevant in the human context but you can start with mice that have no immune system of their own. Right. You can infuse precursor cells from humans that will act like human immune system inside the mice without damaging the mice and thereby get a more realistic test. That is a good description, yeah. Great, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, we are also trying to identify unique uh, markers of senescence, I mean, uh, I mean, which kind of is an offshoot of what we talked about, you know, identifying these markers. The problem is uh, we don't really have a good biomarker for senescence. I mean, end up we end up testing multiple markers of senescence. So identifying these new markers that we're doing right now in the lab will allow us to also use that universal marker moving forward, which will also alleviate a lot of uh, you know uh, doubling or tripling of efforts that scientists are involved in right now. Right. So both speeding up the research on the one hand and giving you targets you can go after therapeutically right. on the other hand. Right. Fantastic. Well, good luck and Godspeed. Thank you.